There's a new face at an aged care home in Wagga Wagga in central New South Wales. Good morning. Hi, I'm Tammy. Please don't forget to sign in when you arrive. Take me to your leader. Or, even better, the cafe. Hi, follow me, I will guide you to cafe. I think it's that way. I like your hair. The concierge robot at Baptist Care brightens the day for residents like Anne Queer. Is this authorised gaming, Anne? <laughs> <laughs> How smart is this robot? <laughs> what else can it do? Can, can you order a pizza? <laughs> this is the start of something much bigger. Robotics and AI are coming to aged care. Introducing robotics, I guess, is sometimes the initial challenge, is getting the robotics in, but then building and building and building um, to those more deeper use cases are absolutely something that is being considered, not just for Baptist care, but right across the sector. Inside the Wagga home, another robot vacuums and mops, freeing up staff for more rewarding work. More interaction with, with the residents, which I know as a cleaner, yeah, you're still cleaning, but you can still speak to the residents as you're working. One obvious question, Karen, is that as these robots come into nursing homes and get better and more efficient, won't they replace people like you? No, I don't think so. <laughs> These are irreplaceable. <laughs> Consigning the drudgery to robots and the more satisfying work to humans could tackle a huge problem in aged care, retaining people. It's already short-staffed and about 65,000 workers leave the industry each year as demand surges. People who are 85 years old or more, the number is expected to grow times four in the next 40 years. It really is about supplementing and really increasing that workforce engagement so that people stay with us for longer. In the basement, a third robot does the heavy lifting, running laundry bins along a 100 metre corridor between the loading dock and the lifts. Tom Culver is here to oversee his company's robots. And this one's been great because it's really getting through tight spaces, even those elevators, very tight. In a home full of fragile people, the slightest bump could have dire consequences. Watch the person in the wheelchair, please. Whoa, whoa, nice work. Look at that. Yeah. I am impressed. I've been working on robots for five years, yet to have the robot touch anybody. They're just really built for safety. That's, that's the key job. Before the robot's arrival, the heavy bins were responsible for several workplace injuries. They're heavier than they look, yeah. and this one is only half. Yeah. So when we actually, when you take it three quarters, it goes sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm excited. Yeah. So Good. bring it on. Good. I'll be the first one to use it if I need to. <laughs> the coming generation of robots can do a lot more than push laundry baskets. AI programs can already converse with people, and in aged care, there's a demand for interaction. A lot of times, you know, loneliness is a factor here, and even though there's a lot of people around, you might not necessarily have anything really in common with your, with your neighbours. You can interact with a robot and get some latest news and talk to them about topical uh, subjects that you'd like, so that's coming very soon. Concierge robots um, can speak many different languages, so definitely next part of the um, trial phase will be to have the robots interacting more with residents. Well, I can see in the future robots getting people out of bed. That's what I see happening. The Australian Catholic University is developing a small wearable device for aged care workers that will take down their observations and fill in paperwork via AI. It's meant to really help uh, aged care workers, frontline workers, recover more time in their shifts to spend time with residents and less time uh, on a computer entering data. Resident Anne Jobson is recovering from a fractured wrist, but her hearing loss makes treatment problematic. When does the pain come? When do you experience the pain? 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Don't yeah. worry. I will. I will use this tool to analyze your face, mm -hmm. and it can tell us whether you are in pain. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. I can use the camera to check if you are in pain. The software analyzes Anne's expression to detect signs of pain. Yes. So I found two features there, which is the pulling um, at the corner of the lips and also the parting of the lips. So those are signs. Those are two signs of pain. Right. That's in this the category of face. The program tracks her progress and treatment. Do you trust its assessment of her face for pain? I do. I do, as, I do trust this assessment. If, and I can also compare with what she said, that she was the pain had gone away. While the software is embedded as an important part of the nurse's toolkit, the robots are on a three-month trial. The key thing, particularly from the staff and it making a difference in their day-to-day, -day, we'll be getting that feedback from them and just making sure that it's actually valuable for them. All right. And w when are they going to start making coffees? <laughs> That would be nice, actually. What about now? It would be great. <laughs>